caused by the Mongolian uh, invasion of Eastern Europe and Frederick II's persecution of the church. It's primarily the last one was the reason for it. Yeah. I was just wondering at this time, who's running Egypt? Uh, I'll What's come going on there? It's back to Muslim control. No, 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 no more problems in Egypt. I swear. We don't get to hear from Egypt for a long time. Um, Leon, the first council of Leon was called on July 17, 1245, and the council formally deposed Frederick as the Holy Roman Emperor. It was the, uh, a first for an ecumenical council, the first time the council ever did this, issuing a bull in which the offenses of the emperor were enumerated. So all it went through, these bishops were locked up, these people were deprived of their land, all, all of the offenses that he had uh, canonical, um, that he had violated. Unlike earlier councils of the Middle Ages, Lyon issued no councils <coughs> concerning the reform of the church or combating heresy. So this is one where they kind of, they, they're interested primarily in what to do with Frederick II. These other issues are kind of quickly touched and moved on and then gotten to the issue at hand. Other constitutions regarded the election of bishops. Uh, Constitution 18 made hiring assassins an excommunicable offense, even if the assassination attempt failed. So that's a, um, an interesting one of things of the day. Second chance. Yeah, second chance. <laughs> Constitutions 19 through 22 dealt with issuing excommunications and treating those who had been excommunicated. So um, excommunication was meant to be remedial, to cause it uh, to a wake-up call to the person who, re who received the sentence. It was not meant to be vindictive, and it was not meant to be a surprise when this happened. It was um, kind of a last attempt to, to reach out to the person to say, this is the, this is this, um, what your actions are causing, right? But as you can see with many of the rulers who have been excommunicated over the past, at this point, two, three hundred years, it doesn't always have that intended effect, um, and it won't going forward either. The council uh, issued a decree on the management of church debts. Uh, a decree was issued to come to the aid of the Latin Empire in Constantinople. Uh, the faithful were encouraged to assist financially in the crusade for the Holy Land and the Latin Empire of the East. And there was a, um, the council called uh, to halt the encroachment of the Tartars of the Mongolians, issued the following, saying, Therefore, on the advice of the Holy Council, we advise, beg, urge, and earnestly command all of you, as far as you can, carefully to observe the route and approaches by which this people can enter our land, and by ditches, walls, or other defenses and fortifications, as you think fit, to keep them at bay, so that their approach to you may not easily be opened. So... You can see, actually, the, the council seeing itself speaking for the welfare of the whole, not just the church, but the whole society, right? Attempt to set uh, the whole society. And a final decree encouraged a new crusade to win back the Holy Land from the Muslim control. So, uh, yeah. This, this certainly could have done good for the for relations with the Eastern Church after having kicked them out of Constantinople now endorsing it by saying right. we need to keep our right. God, our it, is, right. It, it didn't help matters. Yeah. It did not help matters. Um, the, now, last time when uh, you went over to the Council of Vienne, did uh, Father Albert talk anything about the Avignon Papacy? A little bit? Um, so, Following the, um, if we fast forward up to the early 1300s, now the problem is not the Holy Roman Emperor, now the problem switches to the kings of France. So there's kind of a shift in who has the most power after Frederick II, and uh, Charles of Anjou, who's a, a French king, becomes more powerful, and that's one of the reasons that the Greeks come to Second Council of Lyon because they're afraid that he's going to invade. So they're trying to trying to stop that. They don't want another invasion. But um, Philip the Fair, this is he was called, I think more for his complexion than for his behavior. Um, 
the he was uh, the the if if Pope Innocent III had if the balance of power was relative to him and let's say King John of England, it was in Innocent III's hands. It was it was had shifted by the time of Philip the Fair and um, the popes of the early 1300s, and he called the shots. Um, Clement V had been elected pope. He was a Frenchman, and he had been elected pope in the year 1305, and this was partly an attempt to appease the French king, who was so hostile to Boniface VIII, who had died a few years previous to this. And uh, trying to appease him, and we have a French pope, maybe this will smooth things out, uh, it did not, it did not happen. Now that and a very chaotic unrest in Rome caused Clement V to say, I'm leaving Rome and moving up to southern France, to Avignon. Formerly it's papal territory, but surround, you know, you know, it, was, it caused problems and you're in my backyard, right? Uh, the election of subsequent French popes and the preference of many of the curia to stay in Avignon helped keep the Pope there for nearly 70 years, 1308, 1309 to 1378. So this period becomes known as the Avignon, uh, Avignon Papacy or the Babylonian Captivity. Um, you know, you're in southern France, nice climate, you don't have to worry about the troublesome Italians and those, uh, those meddling Roman families and all that intrigue. Why not just stay in southern France? It's much nicer. Um, What's that? <laughs> uh, as a consequence of uh, the, one of the consequences of this, though, was that the prestige of the papacy begins a long decline.